Welcome back to my channel and to another R video tutorial. Today we will talk about violin plots and what they are good for, since I was confused about that myself a long time. That's because as a market researcher slash sociologist, I rarely work with metric variables. A metric variable is something where you actually have a measure like here, uh, a freedom score or a classic example is the height of someone. But in market research, we often have categorical or uh, nominal data. So if you want to look at my other video tutorials, go to my homepage. I will include the link in the description of the video and block in tutorials. And there you have the R tutorials. There are five till now. I will again use the pipe, I think, at one point and data table is here you can look that up so let's get into it so first let's read in the data and the data comes from the Kato, Kato Institute whatever that is and they have a human freedom index it's uh, almost all countries in the world and they give a value I think between one no between zero and ten and the ten is the maximum freedom in a country and zero is like the minimum freedom it's a negative freedom uh, index. If you're interested in philosophy, there's a difference between positive and negative in, uh, freedom. It doesn't matter. Uh, but here they only have an Excel sheet, which doesn't really work for us. But on Kegel or Kegel or whatever, I never know how to pronounce it. You can download a CSV. I think you have to be registered uh, to download it. And I'm not sure if I'm allowed to put it on my website. So. Uh, I'm sorry if you want to reproduce this you have to register and download it so okay here I'm removing all the stuff from the environment it's empty now I'm setting my working di directory and we use data table and the tidyverse so to read in the data we use fread uh, and it's called human freedom Let's see, uh, looks good. We store it in an object called data. So it's a data frame and data, data table now. But we have a lot of columns in here. Let's look at them. We actually don't need them all. It's like 124 columns. So let's look at the first view. We do it like this. I'm rushing through this because this is not really about data wrangling. Uh, that's stupid we need to do it like this and here we decide that we need only a few columns we need the year we need the countries we need the region and we need the hf score that's the actual score that we will plot here so let's look at this looks good we store it again in the data frame but uh, I want to rename the country the countries uh, column because now it's countries but I want to have it as country don't ask me why uh, let's look at it again it's weird because I have to just my resolution here but yeah we have year country region and hf score but here we can see that we actually have nine regions that's a little bit too much for the purpose of this video so what i did here i took them and made out of them i think yeah five regions so i talk about this in the data table video or if you have questions, just let me know what I'm doing here. Actually here, I wasn't sure how many regions with Asia in there are and how they are categorized. So I'm using the pipe here to see, uh, okay, we have South Asia, East Asia, Central Asia, and Caucasus in German. I don't know how you pronounce it in English. And I'm putting together North America and Oceania here and Latin America. In Latin America, there's actually also the Caribbean here, but I'm sorry, Caribbean. 
Uh, you are part of Latin America now. Okay. So to check if we categorized everything correctly, we can use the is an a function inside of the uh, uh, data data table function here. It's not really a function; it's kind of a function, and we can see we it returns us zero rows. That's a good sign because everything is now in our new variable region. New, we have five regions. And we actually need so that ggplot works. ggplot is the function that we use to make the actual plots. It needs to be a vector. So I always test it like this. And if it looks fine, I actually assign it to whatever I want to assign it. But we can see there are a lot of uh, observations here. And we actually only want the year 2016 yep looks good again we assign it to our object and the data is set up let's look at it here how we want it so to start with the plot we don't need this right now we needed to save it later this is my cheat because I don't remember everything Let's focus on only this, these two lines here. So we use the ggplot function. We say, okay, use the data, data, it's named data. Um, and here we set the aesthetics. So actually for, let's do it. We don't, we don't really need something at the beginning, beginning at the x axis because we actually just want to represent the HF score variable. What we can see here is these are all countries now in one violin plot. We can see that most of the countries um, have a score around, I don't know, 6, 6 6.67 or something. Because what the violin plot shows us is if you want the distribution, you can think about it like a histogram. So we can see here, uh, I don't know, that's four. There are only these many in relative terms uh, observations at four, but there are a lot more up here at six. What did I say? 6.6 .6 or something. But actually, that's already a little bit informative because we can see that a lot of countries are right in the middle from one, from zero to 10 or a little bit above the middle. More countries are above it than are below, but we uh, made some regions. And why would we do, do that? Let's start like this. We can also assign a group here. So if we say group equals our new um, variable, we'll automatically split it up into the five regions. But uh, we don't know which region is which and it looks a little bit awful. So there's a nice functionality in ggplot. We just use the fill argument that's to color it. But what it does, if we use it, it not only um, colors it, it understands that it's uh, five distinct values in this variable and it already splits it up and colors it for us. So that's nice. Now we know Okay, the first one is Africa and the Middle East, the second one is Asia, and so on. Here, um, there's a straight line. Mostly when you see violin plots, you don't see it like this, but it's more accurate like this because we can see that there are no values above this line here. Let's make it bigger so you can see it. So there are no values above this line here. But to make it look like all the violin plots that you see on the internet mostly, just say trim false so don't trim it and then it does this this thing here okay great so more or less that's our violin plot but i actually want to add some other statistics to it and in this case i want to add the standard deviation and the mean so we can do that by using um, the stat summary function actually if you want to assign or Assign, I don't know if assign is the right word. If you want to add something to the plot, 
you type a plus and in the next line you do whatever you want and in this case we want to add a um, statistical summary i guess that's what it's called we want the mean and the standard deviation that's what we set here with fun.data and here we can say that please only show uh, the normal length of the standard deviation because he, here we could also multiply the standard deviation by some factor to show the confidence interval or stuff like that but right now we're just focusing on the standard deviation we are saying use uh, the point range to represent it so the point will be the mean and the range the line you will see it in a second will be the the standard deviation and here we set the shape i'm never remembering what the shapes are in ggplot but a simple google search will tell us here i think i used the triangle yeah so 17 uh, it's a little bit let's make it bigger where is it uh, also not really good open oh, in a new one whatever uh, if you can see it you have to believe me that the triangle here is there's the number 17 above it so we say shape 17 and i made it white for because uh, i don't know to show you that you can also color it so now um we can see that it did it but what it did is it plotted all the standard deviations of the five groups and the means in one line and this has to do with what we did up here because at the beginning i said we don't really need anything on the x-axis but actually we do need something or we, we have information on the x-axis and the information we have is are the different regions so to do that accurately we say x equals our region variable and now we can see it works so we can see all the regions and the standard deviations and the mean if we zoom in you can also see that down here the the labels are not overlapping that this is only overlapping because uh, we don't have enough space here so that's good so now we not only have the distribution and how many observations are there uh, represented with with the violin plot uh, here but we also know the standard deviation and the and the mean but we can also add the actual observations so what we can do is we use gm points and i'm just showing you now um to add the actual observations but here they are on a straight line so we have no idea how many points really are at a certain uh, uh point but we know from the from the violin plot that here let's make it big again so you can see it that here because the violin plot looks like this here there should be a lot more observations so if we want to represent this we can use either the position argument here i hope this works and say chitter and now we can see they are not in a straight line anymore but it doesn't really look pretty at all um so we want to do some more but the guys from ggplot i guess it's Hadley Hadley wickham guess that we want to do more stuff with the chitter so we can also use the gm chitter function so it's, uh, it's similar to the gm point but it's gm chitter we are doing the same thing we are setting a shape again 21 do i still have it open yeah it's this one here i come to the difference in a second between uh the the shapes from 16 to 20 and 21 to 25 but let's just do it and now we can see if we zoom in now the points are not uh, as far away from each other they are more centered and we did that with the width uh, argument here i set it really low maybe let's try 0.2 close this 
look at it again. So yeah, you can play around with these uh, arguments here. So let's uh, just say we keep it at 0.2. And here we can actually see now that um, there are more observations here. Um, what we already guessed with the shape of the violin, violin plot. Um, and the difference between these shapes here is we can use with the with the shapes twenty one to twenty five we can use uh, the fill argument because if we don't use the fill argument and another shape let's get rid of this I can show you it will map again I never know if it's color with an U or not did something wrong forgot this thing here. What's, what's happening now is um, it assigns the same colors to the points um, uh, as the, the violin plots have. So if the points are inside of the violin plot, we actually can't see them. But of course, I could also say just make it black or something. Black. Um, nope. Oh yeah, that's stupid. I will do, I guess I will do a video about Chi plot about the difference if, where you put, where you put an argument, because it's a difference if you put it into the aesthetics or outside of the aesthetics, but that's not what this is about today. So of course I can make it black, but I actually want it to have the same color as the filling of the violin plot. So let's do that again. I need this. Um, it does it, but because because it's just the, f the the shape is not between twenty one and twenty five. There is no border around it. So uh, we just can see the points inside of the violin plot. But if we use a shape between 21 and 25, it actually fills it. No, nope, it doesn't, because I have to say fill here and not color. And it has a border, a black border around it. So that's perfect for us. It has the same color and we can see actually where the points are when they are inside the violin plot. But I still don't like one thing because now with the points, we can't really see. That's a good example here. Um, uh, I mean, here we can see it, so that's a better example. The points are over the, the standard deviation at the mean, and there's a simple solution to that. We just take the lines where we edit the standard deviation and put it after we add the points. So let's get rid of the plus here. And now it just first it draws, if you want, it draws on the points and then it draws on the standard deviation and the mean. So we can actually see where the mean and the standard deviation are. And the last things um, I want to do is I want to add a title to the plot. Nope. Um, we do that with just GG title and just write in whatever we want. Uh, so now here it's human freedom index, but I also want the title to be in the center and that's what we do with the next line with the theme function, plot title and so on. Let's do this and it doesn't do anything because uh, that's not a comma it's a plus of course learn your chi chi plot um now we can see it's in the center and i also want to label the axis so i don't want to have region new here and hf score i actually want region and human freedom index and we do that with the labs function and then we just simply say axis region y equals human freedom index and it automatically, as we assigned here, and uh, yeah, here, as we assigned here, it automatically does the legend. So if we use the fill argument inside 
the labs function. It knows that we want to let lab stands for labels, excuse me, that we want to change the label of the whatever happens up here with the fill with the fill argument. So we can simply say region and then it says here region. We can see here it also says region and here it says human freedom index. Actually, let's try something because that's I just realized that it's redundant that it says region here and here. So yeah, okay, you can just put in an empty string and you will get rid of the title of the of the of the legend. So that's it. We can also save it with the gg save function. Um, here we say in the first argument how the file on our hard drive should be called. It's freedom.png. And but to actually do that we have to assign all our ggplot code here to an object again. And we do that as we know. We assign it and now we have here the object plot. Um, that's what we feed into the gg save function as the second argument and I played around with how how wide and how high the the picture should be uh, I forgot I think it's inches I'm Austrian so I have no idea what inches are it's not pixels or something I think it's inches but I just played around with it and if we do that it saves it and we can go to our folder and open it and we have a nice picture of our violin plot and what we can actually see when we go and uh, interpret the plot because this is a case as I said in the beginning where, where it's really useful to use a violin plot because we can see in with uh, we can see really fast that North America and o Oceania has the highest freedom index and we can also see uh, okay here are only six observations um, and that, that's because I uh, uh, I read it the, the, the regions um, so the six observations are four are up here and two are down here and because it uh, I think one of them is Fiji and one is one of them is uh, Papua New Guinea they belong to Oceania, so um, but it's not a really good representation because up here we have no uh, we have North America with the United States and Canada and New Zealand and Australia. So we can see if Fiji and Papua Papua New Guinea whatever wouldn't be in there, it would be even higher. Then we can see that here in Latin America how it is we have some countries that are on the uh, on the mean of north america but we can see there are a lot of observations right in the middle which is also represented here with the mean and we have one down here that's interesting actually look let's look that up real quick which country that is so we say data um region new like uh, Latin and let's be lazy and assign it just to uh, whatever uh, something because now we have all the Latin America and Caribbean countries here and let's sort it here oh Venezuela okay that makes a lot of sense so we can see the Vene that this one down here is Venezuela of course, we could. Uh, ggplot is really flexible, so we could really uh, uh, put a label here that this is Venezuela, but this is not what this is about, and the video is already really long. But all in all, for some occasions, um, the violin plot is really help helpful, I think, um, as we see here. And you can add a lot of stuff, as, as I said, the standard deviation, the actual observations. And ggplot just looks nice most of the time with the standard settings. So yeah, um, that's it for violin plots. Uh, if you have questions, just let me know. I will include everything you need if you want to reproduce it in the description of the video. Go to my website if you want. Check out the other tutorials. And see you next time. 
Thanks.